Hello, I'm Richard Sharing. You're about to listen to and or watch my podcast, Rehearsal Lester Per, Rehearsal Lester Per, as the cool kids are calling it. Uh, there are lots of ways you can help us out. This is free. It does cost us money to put together, so and we'd love to do more stuff on the internet. So there's lots of ways you can contribute. But one, for example, would be to come and see me on tour. Then I can earn some money and I can carry on putting out this free rubbish. If you go to richsharing.com slash L-O-T-D-S slash tour, you can see if my Lord of the Dance Seti tour is coming close to you. Or if this is in the future, uh, just go to richsharing.com slash gigs and you can see if I'm coming to a town near you or indeed your own town. And then just come and see me and then we won't have to do these embarrassing adverts anymore. Thank you. Enjoy the podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, Wes... It's not going well. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre Podcast. Welcome a man they thought he was shooting dust, but one got through. It's Richard Herring! Hello! Hello, thank you very much. Welcome to the show. Welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre Podcast, or as all the cool kids are calling it, Rahela Stapa. <laughs> Lots of cool kids in today. Yeah, um, uh, the news has broken. It's a secret I've been uh, keeping from you all. But um, I did in July. I went with my wife to uh, the hospital for a scan. She was having a scan, a bit nervous. Um, you know, it's like they've got that kind of black and white monitor as they as they kind of it's that weird Doppler effect as you're watching this kind of thing zooming in. And it's a bit like the opening titles of a 1960s episode of Doctor Who on the on the screen. But instead of the face of William Hartnell appearing, as I was expecting. Um, the reason I did get such a big laugh is because I know a lot of you are saying, well, Richard, the uh, opening titles of the Doctor Who never featured the face of William Hart. No, they, that was not brought in until Patrick Chowton, so I will not laugh at that. <laughs> that joke, that is not... But I didn't know that at the time. So I was expecting William Hart. Instead of William Hart's face, what we saw on the screen was like this tiny human being that was like living inside of my wife as 12 weeks old. It was part of my uh, sex excrement. Uh, one, of my, <laughs> one of my sex excrements had got through. I don't know. I'm not sure how it got in there. I, I'm certainly, I don't know how they're going to get it out. That's what I'm worried about, because it gets... But you'd think with medicine, they'd be able to do something about it straight away, but apparently we have to wait till February before they can extract the... Uh, <laughs> this uh, sort of awful parasite that is living inside, <laughs> inside of my body. No, it's my baby. I and mean, we're having a baby, so that's a uh, very exciting... Uh, Exciting news. Um, it's typical, isn't it? I mean, it's the first time I had sex and I get someone pregnant. That is just... That is just I, uh, I've decided to stand by my wife. We're going to keep it. So that is, that's the good news. It's quite a big responsibility. Uh, but I've been having fun uh, trying to come up with stupid names, which I was reading on one of the pregnancy websites men should not do because it, it shows that you're not taking the thing seriously. But I've been doing it for months. Uh, trying to come up... Uh, with the most uh, stupid names. I, I quite wanted to, if it's a girl, I'd like to call it Leanne. So it would be Leanne Herring. And that also works for... I thought that would be quite nice. That also works for Leon. Leon or Liam would still uh, work. Uh, but uh, I'd quite like to go... Uh, I'd like, I, was try, I was trying to convince my wife I kind of had some Russian and ancestry and that I had a great-grandfather called Hardoff. But... Uh, <laughs> wouldn't go for that. Uh, so then I, well, I quite like, I was sort of thought it would be good to call it Red. Red, that would work for a boy or a girl. Red, red. But then I thought, no, that's too obvious. So I've been trying to sneak it through past my wife by sort of suggesting, when, she, when I pretend I'm being serious, I go, well, well, if it's a girl, we could call it Scarlet, Scarlet, or Ruby. Ruby. So you sort of sneak in that in. She then, go, oh, no, I like Scarlet. And then I, then I thought, after it was a boy, uh, Rufus, and she really went for that. Oh, Rufus Herring, that's great. But Rufus actually means the red-haired uh, one. So... I thought I nearly got that through, but we, if it is a boy, we might go for that because uh, God, Rufus Herring sounds like a... You can think of a sort of solicitor or someone, or a, a judge could be called Rufus Herring. I mean, that could be Judge Rufus Herring. That could be a primetime BBC. It's good fun just uh, trying to come up with stupid names for your, for your child. I like sexcrement or just parasite. I mean, I just say things like that. My wife, my wife is furious with me. I, don't, I, I suspect we will get uh, divorced quite soon. So... Um, <laughs> But I'll stand by, I'll stand by, <laughs> despite... I'm, just telling, it's I'm 47 years old, my, and weirdly, and that is, and it's an odd, I, I'm actually, when the baby's born, I'm going to be almost to the day, the exact same age my dad was, 
when he first became a grandfather. So that, and that would be my first child, which uh, shows a lot about generations or how uh, pathetically immature uh, I have led my life. Uh, I, should be, I should be a grandfather by now, but I'm not. But look, we're going to crack straight on with our first guest this evening. Uh, oh, no, I've given away that we do two in a week. Oh, fuck, that's ruined everything. Uh, in all the excitement. Uh, she is probably best known for her three appearances on Rich Terring's Edinburgh Fringe podcast. That is... <laughs> She's done all right on those, and I like to give some of the new acts a chance. And it, if I feel they're doing well, well enough, I bump them up to the proper Leicester Square Theatre podcast. And I'd, I'd like, this is a new girl you're going to see quite a lot of. Uh, she is a woman, so obviously not funny. Uh, so we all know that. That is. But let's see how she goes. So far, we have a kind of competition in Edinburgh to see who is the who wins. We have a battle basically to see who wins, and everyone agrees. Out of the three we've done so far, it is 3-0 to me so far. No one disputes that. There is no... We may be 3-0 to Sarah so far. Will you please welcome, I'm going to win tonight, the amazing Sarah Milligan, ladies and gentlemen. Sarah Milligan. Sit down. Such a cop. <laughs> Hello, I'm, everybody. I'm just going to film. This is just for my own entertainment oh, for later on. What am I supposed to do? No. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. What entertainment is it for? Just for, you know, I just like to uh, watch. And I'll just dress you up as Geordie Shaw uh, and in my mind. <laughs> did you see her in Geordie when she did Geordie Shaw on her TV show on the Sarah Millican television programme? She dressed up as. I didn't even know what Geordie Shaw is. It's a TV show of. To working class people having sex with each other and you dressed up as one of them didn't you <laughs> yeah it was very sexy it was very nice so, it wasn't uh, it was awful it was beautiful it wasn't it was um one of the girls who was in geordie show they're very sweet kids but one of them she just said to me and i looked like a proper fucking skunk <laughs> and um and she looked at me and she went e, you look lovely <laughs> <laughs> no i really don't really, no really, i really, really don't honestly i mean i'm usually disgusted by you as you know but <laughs> I could go. Ah, oh, the feelings mutual. I, could, uh, I, I just could. had to take an antacid because there was so much sick coming up with this. <laughs> just the thought of sharing a stage with you. Because I think your guests are normally a lot closer, but I yeah. asked for this distance yeah. to be yeah. fine. <laughs> I'll be fine, I'll be fine. It's all right. Uh. We'll At backstage, we were saying, but we must start. The thing is, we're doing it now. Let's start. Let's start with not being too offensive to each other. So, so yeah, we've got somewhere to go. Somebody will have to die by the end of it. <laughs> It's going to get terrible. <laughs> so, Sarah, uh, this is something I didn't know before today. Uh, uh, Sarah Millican is not your birth name. That's your first married name, Millican. Yeah. Name. Why did you keep your... You divorced your husband, your stupid first husband. First husband. Yeah, your first That's husband. That's bad, isn't it? It sounds really bad, doesn't it? My first husband. Yeah, uh, yeah I, I uh, decided to keep it only because I was writing plays at the time, just short plays and things at the live theatre in Newcastle. Yeah. And I was just starting to, I had a column in the free paper and I was just starting to, like, you know, I wasn't really on step one of the ladder, but I was sort of near the ladder. Yeah. And I thought, if I <laughs> show up, it still means something. <laughs> You're all in the audience, see? <laughs> no way near any fucking ladders. <laughs> Thanks to the four people clapping. Um, I, uh, <laughs> no, I, um, so I decided to keep it because it felt like if I changed it then, then the people who were like, oh, I like her stuff, yeah. then wouldn't know who I was. And no. so I decided to keep it. I changed uh, to Miss from Mrs. And I got all of my cards changed. I sent them all off to get them changed. And the first one that came back was my Boots Advantage card because <laughs> they understood that I needed a makeover. <laughs> um, but I, uh, yeah, so I decided to keep it. And then now, because I'm known by it, I didn't change it when I got married again. No, so that's... It's weird, think, isn't it? Yeah, Is it for weird? Your, for your second husband, that must be a bit like, OK, so she's not taking this that seriously then. That's <laughs> well, you know, marriage is temporary, you know that. Um, I mean, this one's going well so far, but it's very early yeah, days. Uh, but also, uh, he met me as Millican, so, yeah. you know... No, it's fair enough, but and also it's, it sort of in, it rubs it in the face of your first husband, doesn't it? That you're really successful with his. Well, name. I mean, I didn't think of that at <laughs> all. <laughs> <laughs> this is all um, I've had from you. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Just in case he wondered, is that the one I used to be married to? <laughs> oh, same yeah. surname. Yes, it must be. It's not a common surname either. So yeah. I didn't want to go back to my maiden name, so I just kept it. I didn't really know what to do, so I just stuck with it. And it would have been King Sarah King. Yes. 
So yeah, that's not as good. It isn't as good. But then it's hard so to well know. Well, my parents it? might listen to this. Okay. They won't. They won't. They don't know who he is. They don't know who he is. Just, well, um, <laughs> but they've I not do. even tried to I, learn. I, it's not. It's not a point. I do um, know who your dad is, so that's weird, isn't it? Your dad is kind of famous and more. Yeah. So that's my weird. dad is because um, uh, we did the pilot for the TV series, and and, uh, and understandably, like producers and things were like, oh, and I was like, let's interview my dad, and they were like, oh, really? <laughs> and then we, I said, look, try it on the pilot. That wasn't going to go on the telly. We'll see. And uh, and lo and behold, he was brilliant. And they went, okay, we understand. Yeah. But then when the first episode actually went out on the telly, the first series, my dad rang the next day, and I said, um, you know, what what does it feel like? And did you watch it? And and he said, I got recognised today. <laughs> And I said, really? And he said, yeah. I said, where? And he said, at the dentist. And I said, that's because that's your dentist. <laughs> <laughs> like, he had an appointment. <laughs> so that's why they recognised him. Um, but yeah, he, uh, he, I think he likes all that sort of stuff. Yeah. It's a bit of a shame when, you know, your dad is more successful as a TV star than I am. That is a, that is a, that's a kick in the face. Was, I nearly jumped in with, yeah. what, more than you? Yeah. But then I thought, that's rude. But then you went yeah, there went anyway, there so I could have done. I'm missed doing, an opportunity to be rude to him. I'm doing, Slacking. Doing your job for you. So um, I'm having a human baby. So uh, I was... I mean, you're not, though, are well, you? I've done the your hard bit. Your wife is. I've done the very hard bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's harder for the man, because at least the woman's growing it inside and doing something. I've got this... It's really boring waiting for it to come. It's, <laughs> well, it's harder, it's harder for you because of your age. Yeah. Really. <laughs> you know, because you're going to be, like, how old when it's born? I've been for 47 and a half. Wow. And you'll still be able to pick it up and stuff, <laughs> <for> you? <laughs> I've been in training. <laughs> That's why I've been or just picking other people's babies yeah. up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running, away, running along with them. So you <laughs> Would you, uh, you? Is there a baby? Because I'm. What I'm decided to do. Because my career hasn't gone as well as I hoped it would. If I'm honest, I'm going to breathe. It's gone about as well as we all thought. Well, it no, would. but then I was. I was hoping it would be that's by the by. I was hoping it'd be better, but I'm going to breed a super comedian because my wife's also a comedian. That's true. Uh, and then I'm just going to train the baby from, just make it into a comedian. In 20 years' time, he's going to win all the Perrier Award and stuff for me. Like, and then like he's going to go. Did, That's for my dad. <laughs> Fuck but you. Don't you think if you train? Yeah. Don't you think you need to get some guest Good. trainers in? <laughs> <laughs> And I'll pop in if you, you like. <laughs> but that's it's going to be either that or the president of the earth. You got very, you got very, <laughs> got very high aspirations for my child. A lot of pressure. It is. But Not even got hands yet. I think it's important. <laughs> I think it's important to live your life vicariously through your own children uh, to make up for your own fate. That's, that's you see, because I'm not going to have kids, so no. I just had to do it myself. Yeah. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. <laughs> What, is, is, you, you, is that a definite decision you don't want to have kids? Yeah, never yeah. wanted them. Had a, had a, a fleeting moment once uh, where I thought of a couple of names that would be good and my ex-husband, as is now, went, oh, I don't really like those names, so I went, oh, I'm not going to bother. Because, <laughs> like, if I can't get... If I've got to carry the fucking thing around, yeah. like, not just, like, when it's growing, but, like, after that as well, because they can't walk for ages, no. then I would at least be able to shout whatever I like, like, name-wise, <laughs> yeah. uh, and he wasn't keen on the name, so I just thought I'm not really bothered. Okay. I've what never name? had... What name was it? I'm not going to tell you that. Oh, okay. Richard. <laughs> wasn't shortened a dick, are you having a laugh? Um, no, uh, no I did, I've never been... I'm maternal towards animals and yeah. other adults, where like, I'm one of those people who says, text me when you get into it, so I don't know that you haven't died on the way home. One of those. So just cause cats? I, uh, no, they always stay in. Okay. They've got keys, it's fine. Um, uh, but I, yeah, I just prefer animals. Yeah. But it's fine. I mean, there's people like you who are procreating, so I don't need to, that's you know. True. So thanks. That's all right. That's good. I've got cats as well, though. So we've got that. So have you got to get rid of the cats? Well, no. I think we'll probably keep. Don't them. they drink the milk from the baby and push the pram over? That's what <laughs> I read. <laughs> they, might. they do, don't they? And then they weigh in its face. Yeah. And then they sometimes eat their hands. I'm a bit worried about how the cats will cope with this new creature how the coming cats in. Will yeah. Come. Well, you know, we have. But I'm also delighted because it was good to have the cats first, yes. just to check. That I could keep something alive. Did you, <laughs> for see, a long do you enough. start with plants and then cats? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a plant, but I, every time I had a plant, it would die. 
That's why I thought I'd probably not Did you let you. the cats know that when you got there? <laughs> yeah, That's quite terrifying. They just see loads of dead plants and start trying to get out of the house. Yeah, they try and kill them. A, the only plant that survives is a rubber plant, but they eat that whenever they get a chance to the cats. Do your cats eat plants? Uh, yeah, they eat a spider yeah. plant, but we yeah. Googled it. Apparently it's all right. They might just have the shits, but that's all right. Yeah, but they get the shits. And handle, yeah. I've got a mop. But I don't, <laughs> I don't know how they'll cope with the, the baby, but they'll have How to. many cats have you got? I've got two. And are you... What have you got? You've got two. I've got two. You see, because I think two is like normal, and then three is like, oh, yeah. isn't it? <laughs> Although the cat flat that we got says you can have up to 19. Yeah. That's good. <laughs> I told that to my husband, he wasn't overly keen. <laughs> but it says I'm allowed. <laughs> it says you're allowed up to, ni up to 19. Why didn't they just say 18? <laughs> oh, that would be 19, yeah. it doesn't matter. Nearly 20. Nearly 20. Nearly 20. Is it, that, is it one that you can get into like, by the chip in the cat? Yes, but it doesn't work. Like, what, doesn't work? No, because we tried like putting the cat through and it didn't make it open. Yeah. It's a lot of faff. So we just gave them keys. Because I quite, I would quite like that for my front door if they just put a chip in me. <laughs> but it's the start, it's the beginning and the end if they start chipping us, isn't it? If they literally do that. But, but also it means that if you were ever pissed anyway, somebody could just like, you know, put you under the scanner at Tesco and find out where you lived. That's quite nice. It's quite nice for the drunk, isn't it? It's thoughtful. That's what it is. <laughs> Very good. Um, so um, uh, you've done, you've done one thing that I. Uh, the only thing that I would like to be famous for now is the thing that you have done, which is to get on Who Do You Think You Are? Oh. Which I would love to do that, but that's because I'm getting old and, and now I'm, I'm procreating, or I'm halfway to procreating. You know, you never know what might happen. Uh, is, uh, <laughs> um, she uh, might leave you, that's yeah. <laughs> That is true. Uh, and, and you know, it's kind of, kind of, I've always liked that kind of family tree thing, but mm. then did you, did, 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 you, did you cry in yours? You did cry in yours? Yes, I cried, uh, I want, well I cried, there were two stories, and there was one that was harsher than the other, but I thought the harshest one was first, so I cried at that one, because yeah. I was feeling, uh, no, I didn't like force it, I was tearful. But then the second one came like both barrels and I was determined that I wasn't going to cry at both because I didn't want to look like the woman that cries. So I really had to hold it all in <laughs> and it was quite hard. It was, it was an amazing experience. I personally have never had any particular interest in my family tree, but my parents have been, have tried. Yeah. And they, you, you, they sort of hit a brick wall every now and again and couldn't get any further. And, and they said to me, of all of the things that you ever do, if you ever get asked to do it, they actually sat me down <laughs> and said, if you ever get asked to do, who do you think you are, please do it. So it was only about, because you know, they, do you know how it works? Like they, they research you for a bit and then they come back to you and go, no, there's nothing. <laughs> oh, they come, and what they did with me, they came back and said, there's something, but we're not sure yet. Can we have an extension? You get an extension, extension. They keep you beavering away to see if there's any, because obviously they might be like, e, she wasn't married to him, Ooh, which is good for the family, but not really good telly. Um, <laughs> so they came back eventually and said that they had two good stories, but they yeah. don't, you don't know anything. You don't know, like all I got was cold weather training, which as my husband said, that might be just for when you go back home to see your mum and dad. <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Um, they did also suggest that I just don't wear pants. That was one of the things that, that's quite weird, isn't it? They said it was going to be so cold that yeah. it's better if you don't wear pants. Wow, so because it will, will it freeze? Well, because you if you, if you're so cold, I can't remember what he said. Do you think it's this rubbish? Do you think? <laughs> the guy I think it was just a really pervy man. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh, uh -huh, and no bra either. Uh -huh. As long as I'm warm. Um, it was a thing where if you, I think if you sweat, because you've got all yeah. of the cold weather clothes on, if or you if sweat... Or if you're really turned on. <laughs> yeah, well, that's not going to happen tonight, <laughs> is it? Um, uh, if, you're, if your pants, if you're wearing, like, cotton pants yeah. and they get wet with sweat, the coldness would freeze you. Yeah. So they say either no pants or, like, lycra pants. Okay. So, this is bullshit, isn't it? <laughs> Saying it out loud has made me realise that I've been had... <laughs> At the time, I was like, yeah, this makes total sense. <laughs> uh-huh. So you went, it was in, was it, because like, Billy Connolly got to go to uh, India, it looked quite exciting, I think it's Billy Connolly, mm. and some people get to go to, you know, the West Indies, and you got to go to northern Canada or Greenland or somewhere, was it? Yeah, it was Canada, Canada. we went to, and it was minus 26 degrees when we were there, but the, um, when the uh, director and producer had done a recce two weeks before that, it was minus 45. Right. <laughs> So, but there were loads of funny things that happened that they cut out. Like, I really think they should do, like, a, there were so many funny things that I, I wanted. You know the bit where they always have somebody on, um, on a train yeah. and you do tapping on a computer and then and they'll go, uh, 
Sarah Millican decided to find out uh, exactly whereabouts in Canada her family were from. And then there's just me tapping with nothing on the screen. <laughs> what I wanted was for them to have my head and then cut to my hands and for them to be like big hairy man hands. <laughs> they weren't keen. And then the stuff about the fur trade, we made, me and the, the expert made so many beaver jokes that they cut them all out. <laughs> oh, they could have done 45 minutes just on beaver jokes alone. <laughs> nothing, kept them all out. And there was a bit that my mum did, like my mum, because they ask your parents, they sort of sit you down with your parents and they say, what do you think? Like, how far have you got and what do you think? And um, they sat me down with my parents and my mum was obs not obsessed, but she was convinced that there was money. There was money well, that, further back, convinced, yeah. convinced. And how, they said, what makes you think that there's money? And she said, because uh, I think it was a great uncle had a piano. <laughs> That was it, that was the whole, point, whole basis. But the, the man himself also, as well as a piano, he had a drawer full of um, uh, false teeth and a drawer full of glasses. So those things, are, they're quite odd. But yeah. then my mum used to get told off by her mum because at the age of about seven, she used to pretend to play the piano with the teeth in and the glasses on. <laughs> <laughs> Which I thought was hilarious and they cut it out and you're like, oh, there needs to be a funny version of this. They do, they do. It's a carry on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are, but they're very serious on there. My favourite bit about it was you, because one of your ancestors was, was sort of lost out in the snow, basically. Yes. Yeah. And he had to, he had to get his, he had to sort of crawl back with broken legs or something back to the yeah, thing. Yeah. And you were kind of going, I wonder if you'll survive. You kind of go, Yeah, you will, Sarah. No, no, you, no. You no, are no, alive because no. you exist. Ah, you see, but this is what loads of assholes <laughs> said to me on Twitter. Um, <laughs> What they don't tell you is whether the person, before he went away, mm. whether he had already had a kid. Because yeah. if he'd, if he'd <laughs> already had a kid and then went away to Canada, then... then that marriage wasn't going very well, was it? <laughs> well, no, because he went away to earn money for okay. his family. Now you're being facetious. This is, <laughs> and it's about family and yeah, you're going to have one, so shut up. Um, you, see, you wouldn't do that. You wouldn't go away and work for five years. But they, didn't, they never tell you if they had a baby before they left or when yeah. they came back. So I didn't know. Okay. And also, it was, you see, they cut that out and made me look like a tit. <laughs> like I was going, I wonder if he survived. <laughs> I'm not at all idiot. <laughs> Just sometimes. But it was an amazing experience. It, yeah. was, it was tiring and... and it, it took three continents before we could find some uh, sort of um, kind of uh, cold weather trousers that would fit me. I'm fatter than all of the UK and fatter than... Uh, no, it wasn't. It was, we had to go to Toronto. We had to go to a special shop. We tried three different shops. I don't think... I'm, I'm like a size 18, which I don't think is unnecessary. Um, but I, we ended up in a, we, three tr shops in Toronto, we eventually found some. Because I thought, I know they want me to cry in this video at some point, but they should just come into the fitting room. <laughs> so they, we eventually found some that fit. And they were just like, kind of like salopettes, you know, you wear for skiing. And, we, and the shop was called Hogtown. <laughs> I just thought that was so mean. It's so mean. So it's quite distressing in all sorts of ways. <laughs> Right, I'm going to ask you an emergency question to get out of the embarrassment of insulting your dead ancestors. Um, this is a new uh, emergency question. If you had to choose between two, these two, you had to do one of these two things, would you rather date a man who was a six-foot-tall penis, but he has a face? But he's, oh, uh, he sounds lovely. Yeah. <laughs> he can wear a suit that looks, makes him look like he has shoulders, but that's false. So he is just a, he's just like, if, you took, if he was naked, he'd just be a massive penis. Right. But he might have... It's just because when you I was... You keep saying massive penis as if it's a bad thing. <laughs> but six foot is, is, is quite big. Oh, it's true. Uh, or... I'll or, give it a go. I'll give it a go. I'm nothing if not a trier. Or a man who, instead of a penis, instead of the penis, he has a tiny man uh, grafted onto him. <laughs> do you make these up? I do, mate. Are you quite all right? <laughs> Which of those two would you rather rather have? You can ask any specific can the, questions you okay, wish. Okay, I'm going to ask you. a question. Can the six foot penis man has he got a penis as well? Uh, um, well, no, he just is a penis. So I mean, his penis would not function as a gigantic. Why don't penis. you want me to have sex anymore? Well, you can have you can have you can pleasure him. He would like have a blowhole in the. You'd have a blowhole. <laughs> <laughs> you could. You Are know. his feet testicles? No, he's, he's just a penis. On the small man, on the small man, um, that would be... That was a good question, wasn't it? If his feet are testicles, he has to walk around on his testicles. 
which would not be a pleasant thing for a six foot. No, that would be a very hefty no, weight on some I'm guessing they're probably not going to go like shopping anyway, if I'm honest. <laughs> it's probably going to be somebody I'll keep it's indoors. But the tiny man is just replacing him. He's not like, he's not been like surgically attached. He's grown there, but there are some testicles underneath him as there would be. He's just replaced the penis. I feel like such an idiot for asking yeah. now. Um, but, uh, yeah. the okay, extra question. The tiny, the tiny man yeah. that is uh, a penis, but yeah. is a tiny man, uh, can he stand with his arms down by his sides? <laughs> can he breathe in a condom, is what I'm asking. I don't think he would be able to breathe in a, a condom. It would be difficult for him. Would know, in the, in his, if he went anywhere, you know, say don't wear that to the man he was on, you'd have to say don't wear pants to him, because then otherwise that man is going to be then crushed up with some testicles in some pants. It's a very difficult life He's for grown that there. It's his bloody fault. Well. I think I'm going to choose the little man penis. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I think there's still a potential there. Yeah. <laughs> well, it'd be like having two boyfriends as well, because it would be a different personality. It's not the same Oh, person. are they both going to chat? <laughs> <They probably are. laughs> I've changed my mind. <laughs> Penis in a suit, please. Yeah. That's, good. That's a good question. Good answer. Thanks. Uh, you think you're the first one to go for that. Uh, and uh, of, of everyone. Good. Are you ever mis I'm get mistaken for quite a lot of celebrities and other people. And like, just people keep, keep coming up to say, oh, I, you live near me. And we go, hey, I see you in the park with your kids. We go, don't, I don't think you do. <laughs> Unless because you look like... I look like loads of people. Loads of people. But I look like Charlie Borman. I look like Chris Packham. I look very much... You don't much, look like Chris Packham I look at all. Like, um, I look like Brad Pitt, identical to Brad Pitt. <laughs> he is looking people, rough these days, isn't he? <laughs> people often see Brad Pitt on the cover of a magazine and think it's me. It happens all the time. He's copied my look. And then they realise he's on a magazine, so it can't be you. <laughs> Maybe the free paper. <laughs> Do you get mistaken for, for any celebrities, anyone other than yourself? Or you um, I wore red glasses once, and somebody thought I was uh, Sally, the, uh, what is she called? Oh, the psychic yeah. woman. <laughs> Even Sally? though she's got a good, I'm assuming, a good 20 years she's on me, right. I think. Yes. And, you know, is a charlatan. <laughs> That's just common knowledge, isn't it? You haven't spoiled anybody's hopes we can and dreams. Get, we can get sued for that, though. They're very can litigious. We? Well, she's got a very homophobic husband, hasn't she? But we're allowed to say oh, that now because they true, were filmed. Oh, that's that's fact. He was filmed doing it. So she's, in fact, she is, um, what's her name? What's her last name? Sally? Morgan. I was going to say Sally Traffic. Uh, Sally Traffic. <laughs> <laughs> I listen to the radio too much. <laughs> <laughs> she's, uh, uh, she's, uh, sacked, uh, her husband worked there and she's sacked her husband. Oh, that must be awkward. Yeah, I don't know if that, I don't know if that kind of goes into their marriage as well or just professionally. It must do. Yeah. I bet he doesn't do a tea anymore. But... <laughs> No, but that's kind of her and I don't know, because I change my hair sometimes, so I don't, I don't know if there's anybody else that I really especially look like. No. Sorry. That's all right, just interested. I mean, I'm not that. arrogant enough to say, you know, some big, gorgeous person no. like you do. Well, I'm just telling you what happens to me. I'm just saying, I've, I've a lot of yeah, absolutely. two taxi drivers have said, I thought I was Brad Pitt. <laughs> <laughs> because they could only see you in a tiny <laughs> bit of mirror. <laughs> The first one was a guy, and he said, he said, I'm not gay, but you look like Brad Pitt. Is it only gay so people can recognise celebrities? Is that a rule? I didn't know I, that. I didn't know I that. You learn everything, don't you? And the other one was a female tax. I was with my wife, who's, I mean, she's a nice looking lady, but I don't know if she really looks like Angelina Jolly. I mean, I wish. Did you just call her Jolly as well? Angelina Jolly. <laughs> she sounds like she's on CBBC now. <laughs> Angelina Jolly. Isn't she Dom Jolly's mum? <laughs> Maya, I had a friend, when I worked in WH Smith when I was 16, I had a friend who, I lived in South Shields and she lived in uh, Jarrow, which is just further along, and she was once on a bus in Jarrow, age 17 maybe, and dressed in a WH Smith's uniform, and somebody asked her if she was Terry Hatcher. <laughs> <laughs> Not, didn't say she looked a bit like Terry Hatcher, asked her if she was Terry Hatcher. <laughs> I've been researching a role. It's like when Scarlett Johansson <laughs> did that film in Glasgow and was walking around in vans. Have you seen this film, Under the Skin? And they filmed some of it for real right. with her in vans, picking up guys, genuine guys, and then she was an alien, she was going to take them and eat them. But they filmed it like by her picking up guys, going, will you, give, will you show me how to get to this place? And all these kind of Glasgow guys getting in and going, uh, uh, not recognising oh, it was really? Scarlett Johansson, but just thinking some very tasty woman was asking them to get in a van. And drive around. And they still went. Have you seen yeah, that yeah, film? okay. It's amazing. 
No. I haven't, no. Not it doesn't sound like fun. my sort of thing, if I'm honest. No, it's good. It's got too many vans in it, it sounds <laughs> like. <laughs> you haven't sold it, Will. Oh, well, it's, it's, it's quite a good <laughs> film. And you see uh, Scarlett Johansson naked in it. Now you've perked up. <laughs> you've perked up. He was, he was excited just to see some proper women behind him earlier on. He was looking around going, oh, there's women there. So imagine if he saw her naked, but even in, in her film, it would be an amazing thing. For him. I think we're learning a lot about you right now. <laughs> That's what the, all this is about, this whole thing. <laughs> um, and uh, have you ever seen a ghost? Um, it's, already, it's already a funny it's very question. Very serious question. Um, I think so. You think you have? Yeah. I thought you would have done. Tell me all Why? about it. Why? Why did you say There's something? about, just, There's something something about, about me you. Yeah. that you think what? Yeah. I just think you're a bit stupid. <laughs> <laughs> you probably think you've seen the ghost. I bet you Rebecca right. Front hasn't seen the ghost. I'm going to ask Rebecca Front. I'm very. It's going to be very. She's watching. It's now, going to so be she's a very. She's definitely going to say no, isn't <laughs> yeah, she? It's going to be a very different interview with Rebecca Front. I'm going to be very respectful to her because she deserves. She deserves it. She deserves that. <laughs> she does. She's so good. And also, she's a nice lady. Well, I don't know if I am. Uh, not with you, anyway, because no. you bring out the proper twat in me. Um, <laughs> Tell us about the ghost you saw. What kind of ghost was it? I think it was just an old lady walking into my sister's bedroom. That was okay. all it was. That's but quite scary. No, no, was it, it didn't your, feel was, scary. Was it your gran? Uh, I, I don't think so. No, okay. Uh, I don't know now. But I, don't, I don't know. I saw something. I didn't know what it was, and that's what I sort of put on it. So it no. might not have been. I, I you might be right, and no, you I might, might be, be wrong. Don't be. Don't be hurt. No, the, by the me thing is, this it. is good though. This is like neither of us are right and neither of us are wrong. <laughs> I like no, that. There's no way of knowing no. whether the ghosts are real. Or I not. mean, if I get in touch with her again, I make sure she come and fucking haunt you. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mark Gatiss, who is very clever, had seen that saw a ghost. Oh, so there's potential for there me is. to be clever in but the future. <laughs> oh, well, that's nice to know. Thanks. A bit mentally ill as well, though. That's, the, that's, that's what... That's Maybe what ghosts does. only come to nice people who aren't assholes. Maybe that's... <laughs> <laughs> You're a poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll get on to... Uh, uh, have you seen the, bit, the website uh, Dirty Brick Com Confessions? No. There is a, there's a is website. Is it your website? It isn't. <laughs> I, I, I'm thinking of buying it. <laughs> and I would put some dirty up. Dirty Prick, put, did I you would say put it? Some. It's called Dirty Brickcom Confessions, I think, or something oh, like Brick that. Oh, Brickcom. I thought you said Dirty Prick. No. <laughs> that's why I assumed it was. Okay, no, that's <laughs> It's where comedy fans go to put oh. their, their sexual fantasies about comedians. Okay. Who are British, generally. And you just put them up about yourself, do you? I do. <laughs> <laughs> I put, I, uh, there's no, nothing about the Geordie Shore on there. If that one goes up, you'll know it was me. Um, this is the ones about you, some of the ones about you. I don't like doing oh, so much. Oh, why are you telling me these because things? Because I, I want to see if you would do them. And <laughs> <laughs> I'm hoping it's like it's all You're polite. not going to do this to Rebecca it's, from I'm, either, I'm, are you? I am, but with great shame and embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> I... I thought people would have too much respect for Rebecca Front to even put salation. And her, and her child is in the audience as well. As the, uh, she's, I think he should maybe leave for that particular bit. <laughs> I'm disgusted with what people have said about I'm very upset. Left already. I'm very upset about people saying about Rebecca Front. I don't mind them saying about you, but about Rebecca <laughs> that is wrong. No respect. Um, I would like to eat Sarah Millican out. Who wouldn't? It's a perfectly reasonable question. <laughs> That's quite nice. Do you think so? <laughs> you, would you be... So I have quite low self-esteem, so every time somebody tells me they fancy me, I just think, weirdo. <laughs> um, that is... I'm glad they didn't send that to me, so at yeah. least they're putting it somewhere they're where I wouldn't look. it somewhere else where people can see it, and you can go and see it if you want. I and mean, we can stop this if it makes you uncomfortable. Let's do one more. OK. I'd, uh... <laughs> there are loads... <laughs> there are loads more. This one's quite nice. There I are loads, are there loads, yeah. are there loads? There are lots. I think it's disgusting, I'm even, but I'm thrilled. I'm not even going to give you, give you all of it. And I have to say, though, just before you get too excited, there are, like, some Vestufa, like, Harry Hill's puppet and stuff like that, so it's not... OK, yeah, but it's all right. There's some for me as well. Uh, I'd love some highly awkward sex with David Mitchell, uh, Sarah Millican, and or John Richardson. So I think the and or is you... David Mitchell's definitely in there, but and or Sarah McGann or, or jo John Richardson. So we the could awkward, like... The awkwardness is a must, so they want to have sex. Well, it's David already going to be awkward. Yeah. But you and David Mitchell, so if it's you, it'll be you so and David Mitchell and this person. We don't three. have to secure the boy. Oh, what a faff. And, uh, and 
You it's see, if there's three, you've got. If there's two other people, you've got to yeah. shave everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> but if there's just one other person, you usually know what angle they're coming at you yeah. from. And you can just shave that root. <laughs> and John Richardson is a bit of a stickler as well. He oh no! Is. He won't be I, there. Though. He won't be there. That's door. better then. Okay. John Richardson will not be there, so we're taking it. But you and David Mitchell, you have to have all contact. I think it probably will be. Do you know It'd David Mitchell very well? I don't know him that well. No, we all could. Uh, I know him quite well. He's a very him lovely and man. Some strange art comedy fan. Yeah, I'm going to say awkward. no on no, that okay. one, Richard. If that's all right. Okay. Uh, but it's nice to know somebody's thought of it. <laughs> uh, I want Sarah Millick. This is someone else. Okay, is this I the want... last one? Oh yeah. Thanks. Doesn't have to be. I went. Uh... <laughs> Just check it's the best one. And if then I've you know only what's weird is, is you've written it into your notebook. <laughs> so that, like, you could have just printed this off the internet and yeah. then, like, binned it afterwards. But you've written it. How, yeah. long, how many empty pages are in that notebook that you're going to be with this notebook for so much longer that it's still there? <laughs> Read it. I want Sarah Millican to pull my hair and smother me with her boobs before she throws me back and rides me into oblivion. <laughs> Afterwards, we have cake and watch soaps. You know what, that's not... A, can I think about that one? Yeah. <laughs> An oblivion, that is at Lightwater Valley, isn't it? <laughs> it's one of the rides at Lightwater Valley. Okay, okay, yeah. But um, that's... Somebody's thought that through. I yeah. like that they've thought about what to do afterwards as well. It's quite sweet. I think that's a gentleman. It is. <laughs> <laughs> Or a gentlewoman, we don't know. Oh we, don't yeah. know if they're, we don't know if they're male or female. So that is. So, but, I mean, it, it, these are quite. I mean, they are, are obviously horribly weird, but they are a positive thing in, in some ways. They're nice yeah. in a way. I mean, well, I what I find interesting about um, often uh, when I have female guests on this show uh, are that, that people will tweet. Oh no, no people sorry. will tweet me and let me know what they think about that uh, female comedian, which yes. they won't do. Or almost exclusive, it never happens with men. But oh, with, really? But with women, uh, people will feel the need to tell me that I am wrong to have them on the show. Yeah. <laughs> which is kind of odd, which is, that didn't happen very much, but a couple of people went, oh, oh, no. Yeah, they do that. Uh, which is kind of an odd reaction. Well, it's uh, kind of nice to know that those other people are out there. <laughs> <laughs> the people who want to have sex with me and David Mitchell. Yeah. And then he kick and watch soaps. But you, uh, it sort of balances out, doesn't it? I think you get you get a disproportionate amount of weird and unpleasant stuff on the internet. That, yeah. Uh, that, you know, say someone like, you know, you and I, uh, the, uh, the only difference is you're a highly successful comedian. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> we both do a, a fair amount of sort of smutty and yeah, rude, yeah, totally. rude stuff. Uh, that I think some like I think some Connie fans like to look at that and go, uh, that's just uh, yeah, that's just rude stuff. I like I like the sophisticated comedy mm. of students. So you, what you're saying? <laughs> well, somebody, but, uh, somebody should. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, I wonder if so. What you're saying is, I do smut and you do smut, and yeah. you get more people telling you. I get more people telling me that I shouldn't do it. Or yeah, well, just that they don't, you know. But they, it, there's a sort. Of, I think it's a sexism within it, but it's weird that you get. I mean, I think a lot of popular. The more popular you are as anything, you get like people saying, "Oh, I don't like that," because it's like, why is that person gone? But I get vociferous. I get into vociferous arguments with people online about a few comedians mm -hmm. that I like. And that they think I should. Are you like. defending me, or are you on their side? Uh, but it starts <laughs> off. I, start, no, I am defending you. Well, you know, because like yeah. also, well, if, if on this I've had fifty, you're the fifty-first person I've had on this uh, series. So like, out of those fifty comedians, most of them are comedians. Chances are, you know, not everyone's going to like every single one that comes yeah, yeah. on. You don't go. Oh, I'm go now going to tweet the person who but runs that's sort that of to tell what, them. That's what Twitter is. It's for people who. It's like. You know, you and I might have a conversation in a pub about a telly programme we didn't like. Yeah. But then neither of us would go on Twitter, find who wrote it or who starred in it, and then tell that person. It's a real specific kind of person who wants to tell the person. I don't mind that some people don't mind find me funny. That's fine. It's, it's you know, I, there's comics I don't find funny. I don't yeah. think they're not funny, but they're just... People are too afraid. Chris Addison said this, and I think it's true. People are too afraid to say, not my cup of tea. They yeah. have to say that somebody's shit. When they're clearly not. Yeah, I mean, I think it's true, but there's a snobbishness, which, I, and that's why I don't, because I think, you know, you are a really great comedian, so that's what really annoys me about it. I guess people see things, sometimes they'll see one thing you've done, or they'll see you, you know, they'll just, they'll, if, if they've seen you on TV and they've seen one episode of something they didn't like, then they go, oh, I don't like that. 
but you know they're going that she's not a good comedian like you know, no no whatever you say she's well, a comedy, very, she is a very don't good you think that's more with comedy than it is with uh, like music or anything like that because when an audience laugh at you it sort of it comes from the gut like they don't have any control over that yeah. and if you're sitting in an audience where everybody's laughing but you you feel a bit like well why why aren't you making me laugh like it's but i would never then tell them it's the same as like if somebody goes to see people never get as sort of vehement and angry about a band that they hate as yeah. they do about a comedian that they hate because your job is to make them laugh and you're not doing your job as far as they're concerned but i think i think women in general on twitter get more sort of hassle than men do yeah, it and it's it. bad that i'm just thinking yeah yeah what you're saying is true it's bad that i've accepted it yeah. but it is a fact yeah. like i did a tiny thing for the Stand Up to Cancer that was on Channel 4 on Friday, a tiny little video thing that I did with Dr. Christian, getting women to check for lumps, check their breasts, and I still got abuse for that. And you think, well, that means that it's all bullshit then, because if you do something that is so not offensive, that I wasn't even trying to be funny on it, it was just, a f it was trying to get a message across in a light-hearted way, and people are still offended at that, then fuck them. Well, some, <laughs> some people, you know. Some people are very supportive of, uh, of cancer and want cancer to kill people. So it's, a, it's very annoying. Oh, so that's when, what it is. I was, because I'm against cancer. It's kind of oh. confusing for those kind of people because, you know, it's about boobs, so they probably like those, but then it's a kind of weird thing. Uh, so... Uh, I think, so, basically, people want to... Some people are... Twitter is great. I love Twitter. I love the interaction, I love having fun, I love sort of dicking about on there and being daft and stuff and reading about other, what other people are up to. But everywhere has arseholes. When I used to work in an office, there was always at least one twat. <laughs> and it just means that the workplace is a lot bigger. <laughs> <laughs> and there's just twats on there as well. Yeah, but they I mean never, I never, in, I never interact, because no. that's what they want, so I don't bother. Yeah, because it's interesting people. how people deal with it. I mean, what, your TV show, me and my, my wife, when I'm on tour, my wife will be tweeting, you know, t texting me and telling me what's on and we watch it together. I think it's really excellent, populist mm, television. Thanks. It's really, really funny, but your stand-up is also, like, you know, there's, there's so much more to it. I, th I think there's a, like, kind of comedy fan snobbishness to it that they kind of think, oh, no, I'm not going to like that because that's about this. But they, they don't, I think you, some comedy fans don't understand that it's kind of harder, in a way, to do... <laughs> To do uh, to do those to do subjects that everyone does and find your own way through. Mm. You know, I mean, I just I do what I do and it makes me laugh and that's all I've got to go on to start yeah. with and then I try it in front of an audience and then if they give me enough positive feedback, it goes further on yeah. on tour or whatever. And I know that some people don't find me funny and it's totally fine. The problem I have is when people decide to tell you yeah. or when they just. It's kind of for women. I think it's slightly different because you often get your physical appearance criticised as well, which is completely irrelevant. Yeah. Like I bet you don't get a message from somebody saying, oh, that's a really rubbish shirt you've got on. <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't not, say I don't think men way. get it as much as women not do. Not in the same way. No, my, my wife wrote, wrote a very funny uh, article, and she, I don't know what she's going to do with it, but about turning that, the whole thing around about sort of Having you know people on Twitter having go at David Attenborough and how they're going to cut his cock off and stuff it down his throat and stuff. We, when you actually turn it around and do you know say the things yeah. that women have to say to to men, go oh what are you doing on TV? You're too old, David Attenborough. You know, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's kind of you don't see it and it suddenly go oh wow you know you do see the sort of difference. I mean you do I do get people you know people will track you down to tell you they don't like you. It mm. may, but it makes me laugh because I kind of think well why would you? waste your time yeah. doing that. What does it say about you that you wasted your time? To, if I don't like something, I'm not going to then go and find the person. No, and tell I, I, them I, I started like. a rule where I just don't see anything negative on Twitter. So if yeah. somebody, if I go and see a film and I don't like the film, I don't mention it. Because I once saw a film, I can't remember what the film was now, but I said, oh, well, that was a load of shit. Like, because I'm really eloquent on Twitter. <laughs> and somebody who was in it, replied and said, like in a funny way, but like, how very dare you? And yeah. I felt awful. Yeah. So I had a rule now, I just, if I, I don't say I'm going to the cinema, I say I've been, so if I've enjoyed a film, I'll say, oh, I saw that was really good, but I never say anything if I've, because there's just so much negativity on there, why would you add to it? Yeah, I thought you, I thought I saw you in the audience of my show in Edinburgh this year, and then you didn't tweet about it afterwards, so it's, um... <laughs> you were mistaken, I didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> Must have been Sally Morgan. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Predicting your future, it's not what she does, not what she does. Contacting the dead of your success. No, it doesn't work, does it? Move on. It's, uh, it, it's, sort of, it's sort of interesting, it was like, it was, 
But I think it's, I think it's uh, a, a woman being successful as well. Is the, 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 that kind of person who gets, who gets bothered about that? It's, it's such a weird thing for me to think that guys who wouldn't, anyone who's confident in themselves, any man who's confident in themselves, mm. wouldn't be see it as a challenge if. A, if women are no, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so, so like much you can only them, get yeah. you can only be sexist if you think, oh fuck, I am really shit, uh, and so therefore allowing everyone to have an equal go at stuff is going to really show me up <laughs> on this. So I'm going to have to keep it as it is. Yeah, I think it's still they attack, and then I'm still where I am. I've still got what I consider the best job in the world, and I love my job. Yeah. And I still they don't buy a ticket to my show because they're not that. You know, they're, they're not that sort of <laughs> aggressive in their hatred of me. That would be brilliant if they were like, £25, <laughs> I'm going. Um, so my, when I walk out in front of an audience, they're always lovely, and yeah. the TV audiences are lovely, and, you know, so it's... But I did that once. I talk about it in, my, in this year's show. I, when I was 16, me and my friends paid to go and see Ted Rogers from 321 because we hated him. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, heck, we sat in the front row and heck, I mean, it was awful. It was disgraceful, terrible behaviour, so I deserve it's any awful. bad thing I get. It was awful. That's really we heckled awful. everyone. Oh, but then I go, no. you know, so we, were, we were laughing at Ted Rogers, pretending we were the kind of idiot. We were kind of screaming with ironic excitement, pretending we were the kind of idiots who were fans of Ted Rogers, rather the kind of idiots who weren't his fans but would still pay to go and see him. <laughs> see did a show get, and just smartly spoil it. Did you get thrown out? No, we got like the. Uh, there was a very. Um, it, uh, it's kind of a pivotal moment in this year's show because this year's show is a little bit about. Um, looking backwards and looking forwards and where I am in my career and I'm actually almost the same age as Ted Rogers was then and so you sort of realise but there was hardly anyone in the audience and like the people coming up the next day thinking we were part of the show and you know like they would do because you think oh they planted those people to be idiots in the audience it was oh, it was terrible because so, even if you don't like Ted Rogers yeah. he's just doing his job to he's people who paid who like him and you've spoilt their night and you're such a cunt <laughs> <laughs> but at least I'm not a sexist cunt. I did it. Oh, so I you did, did it to a bloke, so that's all right. <laughs> I did it to an old. Do you man. Think, is that like old, an old school version of Twitter? Is that what you did? <laughs> As I say, I say in the show, you know, we didn't have the internet, so we couldn't just tweet him. We had to go along in person. It was hard to be a prick in the 1980s. But you now. still managed. I still did. <laughs> It was awful. It's a terrible, terrible way to behave, but it doesn't... Um, but then like, I was in, uh, where was in Wakefield uh, last week. I'm on tour at the moment, Lord of the Dance City. Do come along. And I don't mind if you pay and ruin the show, actually, as long as I you get the money. should all totally do that. <laughs> um, but then right at the beginning. So I like, did my first joke, and then I'm, as I start my second joke, someone shouted, bollocks! And I went, oh, because it was about dating. And I said, oh, is, it, what, is that the idea of me talking to a woman? And he said, no, I'm quoting the thing on the internet where the heckler shouted bollocks during all your jokes. <gasps> And you kind of go, well, did you watch that video and think, that, oh, I want to emulate that guy who gets... Imagine not even being thing. original, not even <laughs> thinking up your own word. But it was like he'd come along in order to quote the, that thing back at me that most of the audience would have no idea what he's talking about. And I thought, oh, this is going to be a tough gig, but then luckily he did shut up. It was, uh, but, uh, you know, I deserved it. I deserved it. Well, was it Ted Rogers? It might have been. <laughs> it was, it was, dust, it was. It was Dusty Bin. <laughs> Ted Rogers is dead, but Dusty Bin still has some battery life left in him. <laughs> in the 1980s, there was a TV star who was, <laughs> who was a dustbin. Have you seen it lately? It's really complicated. <laughs> it's on challenge. Is it? Yeah, Three, two, it's one. really complicated. It was pretty complicated in the 1980s. Mm. It was a very... I was younger than you, though, well, so... It was, a, it was like prime-time entertainment. It was insane. And it was always like... The clue was so cryptic. So cryptic. Brilliant. Make them like the now. Brilliant. They had the, all the variety stars on there. It's an amazing, amazing. I bet he still, just before he died, I bet he still cried about that night. <laughs> he might where have a done. bunch of twats in the front row decided to ruin his well, night. We did it to everyone. There was like, it was a variety night. And there was oh, like a, you did, oh, well, that's we all right. Equal single opportunities. Person. Who else was on? There was like a really old magician who was. Oh, God, an old 70 man! Or, 70 or 80 years old. And he was already like. Oh, unable Richard. to do his tricks, and then we just ruined everything. So I imagine he did, did go you home and die. What's interesting is that <laughs> while you were a prick then, the fact that you're telling people about it <laughs> now means that you're still slightly proud of it. It's, no, it shows that I'm saying that that's a bad thing. I'm, I'm, uh, it's a, it was an awful thing to if do. If you're properly ashamed, nobody would ever know about it. No, I'm very ashamed of it, but uh, it is it's not amazing. ashamed enough for me. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite. It was quite funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's quite funny that, they, that it's gone full circle and I'm now the same age as Ted Rogers 
and struggling to get an audience in Seaside Town. And you haven't even got a bin. I haven't got a bin. That's it. I, got, I had Stuart Lee. If I'd, if, I'd had, if I'd had a dustbin, I'd be on ITV now. I'd, I had Stuart <laughs> Not as good. Not as good as a dustbin. Uh, so there's a pudding section on your website of puddings yeah. you've eaten. Mm. It's quite... <laughs> Well, it's good for, you know, I thought, uh, you know, I'm not always on tour. Yeah. It's not always things change. And on the website, so let's have something that changes a lot. So put puddings up there. It can only be ones I've eaten. Not, not ones I've just had a spoon of, like of somebody else's. It has to be one I've eaten the whole thing of. And there's also a bit where people can upload pictures of their own puddings. Right. Which sounds vaguely filthy now that I've said it like that. <laughs> Um, yeah, I just thought it would be daft. I just think it, it's nice if a website isn't just basically like a catalogue of things that you can buy. It's nice <laughs> if there's stuff in there that isn't, you know, it's just daft as well. Yeah. Can, you, can we buy the puddings from the website? You could, you could add that. Could be no, like because an I've shut puddings. them all out. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just how it works. That's eaten. Have you ever considered selling your feces to fans? <laughs> I would pay Maybe for that. there might be men in that website. They would be. That <laughs> yeah, might would be. No, I haven't considered it. Um, it. To be honest, I've, sometimes I have quite bad IBS, so yeah. I don't know how you'd transport it. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe in a, a Ziploc bag. <laughs> um, you might freeze it first. That might be better. Oh, yeah, yeah. Put a bit of gelatin in it. Just. I don't know. I've not thought of it. I'm not prepared an answer for this. Sorry if this is. <laughs> A bit freewheeling, sorry. I've never it's been asked that be before, prepared. weirdly. It's nice to be asked a question you've never been asked no, before. That's what, that's true. Would you consider selling your feces to fans? <laughs> you could, at the moment, your DVDs are selling all right. But yeah. If it goes to a point where that's changed. But I could give a free one away with the DVDs. <laughs> a spoonful, you could like, make one last. Yeah, just, could, yeah. That's, yeah, just a spoonful. <laughs> It could yeah, be in vapour form when you open the DVD and then the shit comes out in vapour form and gives you dysentery or something. That could vapor be Vapour form. <laughs> you vaporise it. I don't, when people watch my DVD, I don't want them to be thinking of <laughs> shit. That's, I'd like them to be having a nice time. <laughs> okay. Whatever, whatever. <laughs> so, uh, here, then, this is some, I've got some questions that I think you'll like. Uh, where do you get your crazy ideas from? <laughs> What, like coming on this? <laughs> <laughs> what do you prefer, doing comedy or something else? <laughs> these are good, these are good. Well, you did used to be a journalist, by any <laughs> yeah. chance. These are good questions. What is it, what do you think, because is it comedy or do you like doing other things other than comedy? Which you, if you had to choose between doing comedy and something else, which would you Anything do? else. Yeah, well, something else, not anything else, something else. Something, what's the Listen something? The question. What's the something? Something else. Be specific. I can't think of anything. <laughs> I'm no. just trying to ask the questions that do you ever get that? Do you prefer doing comedy or being on TV? What do you, would you prefer stand up or doing on TV? Oh, and you go, what, I, I like both of them just at different times. They like yeah, equally. They, that's why I do both of them. Yeah, because if I just liked one, I'd probably just do the one. Yeah. Um, I don't like why aren't women funny? Yeah. That's harsh. Yeah, why aren't when you're they sitting then? there <laughs> trying to sell like a DVD or some tour tickets, and then they put at the bottom, Sarah Mulligan's tour is available. Tickets are available on this website. And you're like, you've just gone, women aren't funny. Uh, but if you want to see one, try. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. It is great. Well, I, but I, this is nothing. That's not even. I read a few interviews uh, in preparation for this. Can I prepare? Uh, for this one, I'm very Do fresh. You? I'm very fresh. <laughs> wow, but there was a guy in the in the Guardian who said, "Oh, I'm you know I'm getting on with you." And then he goes, "Oh, and then I asked Sarah where she lived, and suddenly the the the, the barriers went up, and she wouldn't. Uh, I live in Central Manchester. Yeah, but where exactly? I'm not going to tell you. Yeah, because I'm not going to fucking tell you where I live. Yeah, thank you. you I thought it was a bit odd weirdo. that he wanted my postal address. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe he wanted to send me some feces. Yeah, it might be. Um, uh, yeah, and I said no, I didn't <laughs> like, and that was all very jovial. Yeah. And then, like, I'm paranoid. But then he wrote it up like you were weird, yeah. rather than he was weird. It's journalists. I, mean, I love it when journalists do that, and you can just read it. And go, no, you're really yeah, yeah. weird. And everybody, <laughs> all of my friends who read that went, did he really want your address? <laughs> yeah, 
he really wanted me. It was very odd. It was a, but at the time, it was fine. That's yeah. well, it's fine, disconcerting because it seems like it's going really well, and then you read it up and you go, "Oh, that's not what happened." No, but that's. But that's so how it they're works. trying again. It's sort of like tr they're trying this angle, so they're going, "Oh, you're very." I think it's when you're a comedian, so like that's why they go, "Oh, with the tears, of the clown." He was he was so depressed in mm. real life because he wasn't all the time joking and, and laughing think, the whole time. I think they want an angle. Yeah. And But like, I don't like cheese. Why isn't that an angle? <laughs> um, Mark Watson doesn't like cheese. Andrew Lawrence, there's loads of comics. Yeah. That should be an angle. Uh, but they never do that, even though I suggested sometimes. <laughs> um, but I, I sort of, I understand in a way. I don't agree with it, but I understand that to just say, she seemed quite nice. And she seems to get on well with her family and she likes her job, so that's nice. And she works quite hard. That's boring. That's a really boring interview, so they have to find some kind of angle. And I'm dull as fuck. So they have to make up an angle because they can't find one. There's nothing, it's nothing to tell. It's really, I just, I'm just nice yeah. and I like my job. <laughs> it's really boring. You must be quite, I mean, I think to do well, you've got to, have, you've got to work, but you work very hard. Yeah. And you're, so you're, you've got ambition, so they could, they mm -hmm. could say, that, if that's a negative or a positive thing, I don't know. I think it's a positive thing, personally, but I suppose I think it's, it's a positive but thing. But that's, that's how you've got to where you've got to, really, is by just, you work very, yeah, very hard. Yeah, I don't think there's a magic formula. No. I think people think it's like an overnight thing, and you think, well, I just, I really liked being on stage. I liked writing jokes, so I just did it loads, yeah. and, and as much as I possibly could. And then that got us here, on what? this stage with you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think it's on the downturn already? Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was going Definitely on. Definitely on the... On the well, I'm going to talk about this with uh, Rebecca Front, who's won awards, done loads of... She's won loads of awards for loads and loads of stuff. Yeah. Apart from... She's worked with me a, a, on many projects. And it's almost like you can put the two... The things she's won awards for and the things that have never won awards. <laughs> into, to, like a Venn diagram that never really but meets. But you're sort of the personification <laughs> of never really winning awards. Yeah, it is. And I really love it when you win an award because I know it secretly pisses you off. Because you've got that loser status that you can't really have anymore. But I only win it for internet stuff and that doesn't really... It's not doesn't, really doesn't, real, is it? No. Because really at some point somebody will accidentally click something and it'll all disappear anyway. <laughs> so. <laughs> Hope you've printed off your podcasts. <laughs> Um, have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Uh, like on a man? No, like a... No, like no. a Bigfoot. <laughs> like a Sasquatch. Bigfoot, like a weirdly big foot, and no. the other one's just sort of no, like, like seven or eight. like a Sasquatch. I've never seen a... But I like saying the word. Don't you yeah. like saying Sasquatch? Yeah, I do. You might yeah. have seen one when you were in Canada looking for your great great I didn't even say a moose. I was promised a moose. <laughs> <laughs> Which sounds like I'm just saying Geordie for mouse. I was promised a moose. <laughs> we went in a helicopter at one point, and, uh, and they said where we have to get to is like a 45-minute helicopter ride. Okay, so got in the helicopter, and I looked at it, and it was beautiful scenery of snow and of trees it was beautiful but it was very samey and after six or seven minutes I fell asleep and they were trying to film me being like oh wow and I was like you're gonna have to do it on the way back because I was like like that because I'd scanned looking for a moose and there wasn't one so I just fell asleep because it was just you know it's the hum of the wah 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 yeah. well, like, and I, I was all warm and, and you I'm know in me pants me like red pants. I don't think I've ever been in a helicopter. Have you not? No, I don't think so. Oh, you should definitely do it. Well, I'm not successful. Like you, you get to I didn't own everywhere. the helicopter, Richard. <laughs> I helicopter. haven't bought a helicopter. <laughs> Have you not ever been in one? I don't think I've ever been in a helicopter. That's a terrible thing. Give us a cheer if you've been in a helicopter. Normal. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to prove that you don't have to own one to be to be allowed in one. I've got a very rich audience of yeah. business people in there. The helipad upstairs is chock a block tonight. <laughs> Can I just do one more from uh, the British oh. Brit Comp Confession? <laughs> okay. Because this one is, um, I just check it's the one I'm thinking it is. Oh no, sorry, that's, uh, one, for, that's one for Rebecca. Thank God I didn't start reading that. Uh, <laughs> this is kind of weird just because it's. They're it's, all weird, Richard. Well, Carry on. Starts with Sarah Millican's comedy is so sweet. Yeah. Uh, in actually seen you, in, well, no, it's fair enough. In comparison to Frankie Boyle's offensive comedy, this is why they should have a, a raging sex. Where we S have. Where, I mean, where Sarah no. completely dominates Frankie, who begs for mercy when she brings in a load of cake topped with whipped cream. His ginger beard would quiver. <laughs> 
like a beard can quiver. What, what's f interesting about that is that they have concocted a sexual uh, fantasy that does not involve them. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite sad, isn't it? Are they, like, at least watching? I don't think they are. I think they're just imagining it. And also, just they lose kind of control. It's, like, controlled, and then... They get so excited often, like they make a sense. The last sentence is something that doesn't really make sense. They're so his ginger beard yeah. would quiver. But that's, I mean, my beard might quiver. <laughs> <laughs> that's quite interesting that they've typed all that. No one find well that the way the internet works is that you can delete, you can read it through a couple yeah, of times and delete back. it. But he's obviously just been so excited that yeah. he's just, he's obviously like ejaculated as he pressed <laughs> enter. <laughs> <laughs> we've all done it, kids. Um, <laughs> thanks for that. Can I have um, some of your money? <laughs> I think tonight I'm yeah. getting some of yours. Yeah, I'm going to give uh, you 250 pounds for coming on this. Do that's you need it back for your child? My child. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't had a very, I've had a pretty disastrous year, really, but I'm just, what I've decided... I've it's decided good that you don't mention it very I'm, often, though, I isn't it? I, think, um, <laughs> I sort of see money as... Uh, uh, not as not a real thing. I think if you start seeing money as re too real, it's it's. Uh, Hold on, what? It's not real, is it? It's not real. It's not real. So it's when you buy thing. like uh, a pair of trousers, yeah, do you just give them a? <laughs> no, I give them the money, shop. but it's like it's an abstract thing. So it's not. I think if you money is not an abstract it thing. It's not real though. It's not. It, it, we use it, and we because we all agree that it, it exists. It exists. Mm -hmm. But if we went, if someone went, no, I'm not going to take that money for this pair of trousers. The whole thing falls apart. So it's an absolute. Or they concept. just walk out without trousers. Yeah. Or you just walk out with the trousers and don't give them any money. And then go the to other, prison. The other day I was in uh, a news agents in uh, in Manchester, mm -hmm. and the man at the till was taking. A, I wanted to buy a Cornetto, and the man at the till was taking a long time. In October. Time, yeah. <laughs> for breakfast, it was a breakfast Cornetto. You are a lonely man on and, tour. Uh, it was a pound, and so I just left and put a pound on the thing. He was chatting. He said, hey, come back. Come, hey, sir, come back, come back. I said, I put a pound there. Not That's not how back. it works, though. You have to, you would have to ring it in the till. I know, but fuck him. You can get and how he was making me wait. I could give the name of the news agent. Let's thing. not, because I think I you're still in the wrong. I am. <laughs> definitely in the wrong. But see, I could have just walked out with the cornetto. He wouldn't have, he wouldn't have been able to do anything. So... <laughs> So money is an abstract. It's not. We it's all not. believe it's it exists. It doesn't matter. Don't get don't get het up on it. It's a, it's I'm not, not getting het up on it it's so much real. as worried slightly that you are being abusive to people in Manchester <laughs> because they are making you pay I for gave something him this you want. Yeah, but he you well, walked out and he didn't pound. know that you had to you, had you could have had a magnum, that's more than a pound. Well, I was being honest. You weren't you were being an impatient <laughs> ass. <laughs> and but you they see should be a man manning the thing. Well, maybe they don't expect people to buy Cornettos in the morning, <laughs> well, in October. They shouldn't be stocking them then, should they? They should be at the I back. I bet they don't they now. They should wheel them out. <laughs> they should wheel out the Cornettos at five o'clock in the afternoon. What time or when it's sunny enough. I'm fascinated by your it diet was on about tour. It was about 10.30. I'd had oh, my breakfast. Oh, that's all right. You'd I'd had, had proper breakfast. breakfast. Yeah. You said br you'd had breakfast number one. Yeah. And, and this was breakfast number two. Oh, we all do it. Cornetto keep me going. Like, eleven, like a pre-elevenses. Yeah. What kind of Cornetto did you have? It was strawberry. It said Good new. Choice. It said new, and it was slightly different than the ones I'd had uh, in recently. It was so new. It was a new style of cornetto. That's what was. What that's was what new about it? Me. It was just slightly the white stuff on the top. I don't know if it's meant to be ice cream. Uh, is <laughs> I think it's supposed to be, but I don't, I don't know. What, I don't know what it is. It's an ice cream. Uh, it was slightly uh, fluffier than uh, usual. It's nice that you value it so much, but not enough to pay for it. Yeah, I did pay for it. Yeah, you f you threw a pound at a man, <laughs> and then you Take walked out cockily. Well, because he, I, you know, his shop was not. His, there was a sign saying "Use the other till." There was no one at the other till. What was so I meant to do? So just do a little cough, or just say, "Excuse me, can I pay for this?" He or? was talking to a man about cigarettes for ages. So walk out, walk out, and leave the, the cornet. No, co we'll leave the cornet on the counter so it melts. That no, so it loses. I didn't say that. You're putting words in I didn't have time to go back. I didn't have to go time to go all the way back to the Cornetto You didn't have fridge. time. You I didn't. What were you doing? What were you doing that day? That you didn't have time to go to another shop. What were you doing that day? You were driving so, to Newcastle. You were driving to Newcastle, but yeah. you still had time. You weren't that busy. You still had time to buy a Cornetto. I worked out. I had time to buy a Cornetto, even accounting for a twenty-second wait at the till. I had the correct change. I knew it was going to be a quick transaction. 
But I knew if it was if that spread into 45 seconds to 50 seconds, that, <laughs> would, throw time my, is that, that would throw off my whole day of driving to Newcastle. We've talked about this for about six minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't have time to wait for another 15 seconds okay, to be enough. civil to a man you're trying to have a transaction with. Can't she shout at me as if I was some kind of idiot? I'm glad, because <laughs> you are. He got his pound. He's got his cornet. I bet it cost him like 25p for that corner. I bet he's pieces. got a podcast that he's talking to somebody about. <laughs> and there was this right twat came the other day. Uh, I think he was on the telly, but a really long time ago. <laughs> that, is my, that was my slight worry as I walked away, <laughs> that, they, that he might recognise who I was and tweet. Richard Herring just came in, but I didn't need to, did I? Because I've just told the whole story myself. Richard Herring came in and <laughs> refused to wait to Were buy a Were you doing that just so that somebody would mention you on the internet? <laughs> <laughs> so sad, Good isn't thing. it sad? Good, because I don't get many sexual fantasies on uh, Britcom Confessions anymore. Have now. you bookmarked it? <laughs> <laughs> you have, haven't you? You check I regularly. I, I, do, I, I do search for my name. Um, I do have a Google alert. Oh, no, that's, that madness is there. Why? I like to know Why what would you do saying. that? No, no, it's oh, it's horrible. It's I all sort nice. Of think Everyone loves me. It's all nice. <laughs> oh, you haven't seen my stuff. Then. <laughs> um, I sort of think uh, you shouldn't read all the stuff that says people think you're brilliant either, because no. I think, I think, because you you, it's the same as reviews. You can't just pick the ones that are nice. You've got to read all of it or none of it. And I still think you should go on the audience in the room laughing and having a nice time. I don't think, I don't think being told by like however many people that you're brilliant is healthy either. No. So, I mean, it obviously doesn't really affect you, but... No. <laughs> I'm very, I've got a very, I'm a very balanced, uh, I'm normal... Always, I'm really nice to everybody else, and I'm always horrible to you, and it's so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I, with you, I feel, you know, and, and you're never quite sure. Well, the last one in Edinburgh, I think people really came out thinking, oh, my God, they really, well, they really have gone too far, they hate yeah. each other. Uh, but, but you were very predatory early on. Well, you're a very attractive woman. No, like I'm oh, only shut a, up. I'm only a human being. I'm only you? a man, I'm made of flesh and bone. Yeah, and you do look a bit like Brad Pitt. I do look like Brad Pitt. With my eyes shut one of these and my ears blocked. <laughs> one of these days. I mean, now, I've got a, shut. now I've had a kid, though, you must be thinking that's it, you know. Cause before you haven't I, had a kid before yet. I, well, now I've got one in the, in the pipeline. In the pipeline? <laughs> <laughs> Up the Is pipe. your wife a pipeline? <laughs> Before you were thinking, oh, it's all right. He's, you know, he's married, but he could still get divorced. I could see we could still be together. Now the child. Oh, I've never are, thought that. Lord. Now no. the child. Not even when you were single and shagging yeah. about. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, I'm kind of, I don't think that was me. Doesn't doesn't sound like me. It's a long. It was a. Long, it's just what I heard. It was what I, you know. Mm. Wish wish I could go back to those days. <laughs> you don't. No, I really don't. But, I, don't, I, don't. but I kind of, I don't, I was talking this about this to Brendan Burns, but it's like you don't even, you know, I don't think I would be, you would even be capable. I sort of want uh, women to f still find me attractive, but I don't want to do anything about it, but they, they don't find me attractive. <laughs> so it's not, it was nice when, you, when people found you attractive. Yeah. But, you know, just want to go, you, I find you attractive, and they go, well, sorry, look at the old uh, wedding ring and the baby. Really? Because it doesn't, bother me in the slightest. No. It doesn't, I don't know if people find me attractive. I don't care if people find me, I'd, li I'd like to know if people find me funny and I like to know if people think, I think the worst thing anybody could ever say to me is that I'm lazy, that I always find that more offensive than if somebody said I wasn't funny. Cause yeah. I think you can, you can argue if I'm funny or not cause that's a taste thing, but you can't argue whether I work hard or not. Cause I think I do and I think it's a fact, but I, I've never had, if my, if my husband finds me attractive, which I'm assured he does, <laughs> um, I don't, I don't care if anybody else does or not because it doesn't matter. But I think you've got a bigger ego I'm than very I am. Shallow, I'm just very shallow. You are. I'm just incredibly shallow. It's just, it's just, um, it's hard to explain because you know, you know, I'm absolutely delighted to be out of that. Is it because you're short? Uh, <laughs> no, I don't think that's ever. I no, never no. even really. I just there was a little band syndrome. I never even really realised I was short. I was like, <laughs> Uh, yeah, you did. <laughs> when you're wearing children's clothes, you must know them, surely. Just like the styles. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard, I just, you know, it's sort of, it's a weird thing when you realise that um, as you get older, and you're still in your 30s, just. Just. Uh, so, um, it's okay, I'm aware of my age. That, that wasn't a surprise that you sprung on me. I know how old I am. But you are, I think you become aware of your, that your physical decline is not, when you're, when you're, it's, it's irreversible. 
And so your psychological and physical design is de de decline is irreversible. And when, even when I did Oh Fuck, I'm 40, it's like, oh, you know, I'm 40, yeah. And, but I was still... I'd still but I don't I see. Young. I don't think I've declined because I don't judge myself on what I look like. No, so I think I'm getting better because I'm more experienced uh, and more. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it's not about I how you look. It's not about how you look. It's about. Um, so like, I, it's like that thing. I, you I, judge people on their physical appearance no, more no. than anything else. That's what you're saying. No, no. I'm saying because I'm not talking about. That. I'm not talking about being uh, the physical appearance. It's how you feel. Uh, and like, as you get older, like I was, like I was, when I was turning 40, I was kind of out of control and, uh, you know, and having a midlife crisis and, mm. you know, enjoying that in inverted commas. Mm. I was enjoying it out of inverted commas as well. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mind if we're having sex and the woman was going, we're having sex. <laughs> or if we're going, we are having sex. Either way, I was happy. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, now as an older man, it's that thing about, Lots of people said, like, you're, as a young man, your libido is like being chained to an idiot, and then you get older and the libido di disappears a bit. But in a way, as good as that is, you sort of go, oh, it's a shame that that's disappeared and will never come back again in the same way. Do you understand? Are we what still I mean? talking about me? No, this is me. No, this I didn't think me. we were. This um, is me. I don't but really it's about know. getting a bit older, and so, like, the physical decline and the worrying about realising death is coming round the corner. Oh, wow, God, this has gone cheery, hasn't we're it? Coming, <laughs> we're coming to the end of the podcast. And the end of our lives. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, think that, I'm quite I think positive I, and I don't think you are. I and think then that's the having difference. A ba thinking of a baby and then you suddenly go, oh, God, you know, what if I die? You know, then that's... Well, you will at some point. Yeah, but, you know, what if I die, like, in two years' time? Then, or what if I die before the baby's Get born? Get a new dad? Uh, yeah, well, that's it. Well, that's, well, um, yeah, luckily, my wife is young and attractive. We'll all, the, the new dad yeah, will be a manage. very nice guy, so mm. that'll be okay. But it's like, that's a terrifying thing. So do you it? think... But you've always thought about mortality because yeah, you've yeah. had shows about it. Have, so yeah. so is that made it worse? I'm now yeah. interviewing him, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> um, does that make it worse now yeah. that you have a baby on the way? Yeah, much, much worse. Because, oh, A, you have to keep them alive. That's, a, what, that's yeah, one Yeah, but you've done well with the cats. Yeah. Remember uh, that flower? Me, that's kind of, you know... That's a, you as you're driving it? around you know, on tour, you think, you know, this, you know, anything could happen. And then just the idea of never living to see your own child's little face. Wow, and when, when is the baby due? <laughs> How long do we have to I've keep like you alive? Four, I've got to stay alive for four and a half months. And then you just want to see the face, and after yeah. that you're all right. <laughs> yeah. So if it comes out like feet first, yeah. it might be a few more Being minutes. Yeah, but what if they, yeah, it comes out feet first and then I die, and I've seen the feet. But you're in a hospital, so you'll probably, they'll probably save no, they you. Could run, they could get me back, just get me back long enough to go, there's the face! There's his face! Yeah, oh. just open your eyes just enough so you can see his little face. I think you're going to be all right. Okay. I think you might need to cheer yourself the fuck <laughs> up, like. Because I think your kid might just walk out, even <laughs> at a tiny age. It's just, you know, it's, it's a weird... Uh... So does this make you um, uh, eat more healthily and uh, be more active? Yeah, well, I have been, it has part. I mean, got you did a run, I, didn't yeah, you do a I've run? Yeah, I've been more healthy this year anyway, but we, I knew we were trying to have a baby and that's mm -hmm. part of it. So, uh, yeah. So, so you're trying to prolong your life? A little, I think that'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think it would be nice. I mean, ideally, I'd like to, because the kids, when they're young, they're quite cute, and then they get teenagers, and they become a bit annoying. So you're going to die so then? I, that would be the best time to die, wouldn't it? Just on the... Probably. Or just like go into 13, a coma. 13, 14, and, and then 13, come, out. <laughs> come out. When they're like 25. Yeah. yeah. And That's just avoid you've that. through. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I think it's you might need an appointment with somebody more skilled than I. <laughs> This is not what I thought it was going to be. <laughs> I'm sorry, everybody. Have we got... Is Sally Morgan in? Can she... Can she come and have a word? We have... We've revealed a lot about me in this chat and nothing about you. That is... Uh, that's the annoying thing about it. But uh, it's been lovely to sp see you again. I think... Um, See, this is a more... I told you it'd be more grown-up, this podcast, than the one in Edinburgh. Well, I mean, it wasn't so far. It's only when you said, it's lovely to see you. <laughs> that's the only bit that's been grown-up so far. Getting. That's all you're getting. Is that it? Yeah. <laughs> did I nice win this one? Did I win this one or did huh. Richard win this one? No, oh, thanks. <laughs> no. You lot are lovely and you're his fans. It's amazing. <laughs> you'd think you'd side with him, but no. And you were rude to them right at the start. I thought, oh, this is, that's good. That'll get them. I was rude to them. You, were a bit, so you said they were all just ordinary people at the beginning. and I thought they. I were... said they didn't have helicopters. Yeah, you said that. I didn't think that was an insult. I'm really sorry. <laughs> if anyone has a helicopter, I'm really sorry. Does, does anyone have a helicopter? Oh, so, uh, so you were offended you know, at me being you know, right. 
You know someone who's got a helicopter, don't you? Yeah, you do. Do you? Yeah. I'll tell you, you know later. somebody who's got a helicopter. Yeah. You know that's not the same as owning a helicopter, <laughs> don't you? Well, you know Noel Edmonds. He's, he's got a... I don't helicopter. know him. You I do. met him twice. Yeah. That's not... Don't, don't, start, don't start trying to distance yourself from Noel Edmonds, just in case. <laughs> <laughs> You're a terrible man. <laughs> Things will come out about you in 20 years. <laughs> That's why I'll be dead by then. That's <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's your plan. I'll do a rod hull. Uh, and so, uh, it's... <laughs> Gonna practice standing on roofs. Yeah. Good old rod. Uh, so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> you can't say that and make every that makes everything okay. Good old rod. <laughs> Good old lucky rod. So, um... <laughs> His act was grabbing small boys' penises with his hand, for Christ's sake. It was an emu! <laughs> it was his hand. He was a lovely man. I think we should probably, we better end, because, you know, you're driving back to uh, Manchester. Home. Yeah, and you've got a... Where do, what, what's your... What's your... <laughs> what? Um, well, I'm just trying to work out how long that'll take you. Not roughly, just exactly. It's just Manchester. Just, it's just Manchester. Just the postcode, and then, I'm, then I can put it, it in my sack. It starts with M. It starts with M. Fucking weird that she wouldn't tell us all her address. That's why I just think that's really weird. Uh, so, will you please give a massive round of applause to my guest, Sarah Milligan, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> we'll be back with uh, Rebecca Front after two weeks. You'll be less weird. I'll be more Do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs> Hope you enjoyed Richard Jennings' Letter Square Theatre podcast. I thought it was a really good one this week, and I'm not just saying that because it's, I do know what, which one this is going after, and it was a really good one. And it's not, I'm just haven't done this as a generic one. I just want you to know that. Uh, but if you have enjoyed it, why don't tell your friends about it and get them to listen to it and watch it as well? Uh, and if you appreciate it being free, you can help us make more stuff by buying a badge at gofasterstripe.com slash badges or just making a donation. And you don't even get a badge then. That would just it would make you a good person and not a kind of freeloading prick. It's just up to you whether you feel, whether you can sleep at night knowing that my baby is crying and we can't afford to buy it any shoes, as I, as I understand, if that is the main thing about babies, as I understand it.